Today we're launching the Climate of the Nation 2019, a benchmark report on the attitudes of Australians to climate change. It's been running since 2007, started by the Climate Institute and continued by the Australian Institute. Uh, the benchmark report is being launched today by the independent member for Warringa, Sally Stegel. So I'll ask her to launch the report and then just provide a few comments and we'll take questions at the end. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It is really important that we have this kind of information. Um, to have this kind of data and this monitoring of Australia's uh, concern and the public's concern in relation to climate change is really important. So we now know that from 2007, so for over 10 years, we're monitoring that growth in concern. And some of the findings are extremely important to actually stop and think about what they mean. 81% are, are of Australians surveyed are concerned with climate change. Now that is not a partisan issue. This is not a left or right issue. This means that people of all political uh, leanings are concerned with this issue. It transcends a political divide and it's an issue that affects us all. Um, it's something that I want to see more MPs stand up from both sides of the political aisle and ask for a conscience vote. This is an issue that should not be stuck to political lines. It should be a question for all MPs to represent their electorate and be, uh, be true to the campaigns they run when they say they're going to take action on climate change, to actually ask for a conscience vote when uh, issues come up dealing with climate come up in the parliament. 64% of the people surveyed are asking for a plan to decarbonise to net zero emissions by 2050. Now that's a really important uh, number to understand. I asked the PM in question time yesterday, does he agree that we need a plan to decarbonise by 2050 to net zero? And unfortunately I didn't really get an answer. What I got was, well, what we're doing is enough. We're going to use our Kyoto credits to try and get to a 26% reduction by 2030. Now, most people surveyed don't think that's enough. Over 50% feel that we should be doing more. So it's not a question of you get a pat on the back to get, it, to, get to 26% by 2030 by using clever accounting. That's not a good enough goal. We've got to be aiming for better than that. Um, but there was absolutely no acknowledgement of needing a plan to be at net zero by 2050. Now, most states in Australia have a plan to be at net zero by 2050, and they are state governments of Liberal or Labor persuasion. So it isn't a question of only one or other side of politics can take action on this. We've got state governments being responsible and doing what's needed. We need the federal government to lead as well. Um, it's so important. And it, what's important is that we have a report like this Australia Institute report, which really gives us a barometer of how important this issue is for everyone. Uh, I've made no secret that it's why I'm here. It's one of the main reasons I'm here, to feel like we are raising the issue, making sure we're looking for solutions. Anyone in the corporate world knows you don't just get to a result, you don't achieve any goal without a plan. And what we're really calling for is that plan to decarbonise by 2050. If there's any questions? Do you hope that um, the numbers in this report and this like, showing of public sentiment uh, will give the parties, particularly Labor, who are examining their policies at the moment, sort of give them some backing to stick to their guns on this? Well, I think it's been really interesting how silent Labor has been on the issue. Uh, and, I, and I think that's really, that's not good enough. You can't uh, come out strongly on an issue in a campaign mode and then move away and think that this is something that can be dropped. This isn't a problem that's going away. We have to be true to our concern about it. Uh, and it, it is something that all of Australians want us to take action on. It's not a question, uh, you, you focus on Labor, but at the same time, look, uh, we have an outcome where the, the coalition won government. We have to remember what promise was made during the election. The PM during the election promised that we were going to meet our, our Paris targets in a canter, okay? So we need to hold them to account to that. Is this gonna be a broken promise? Are we going to meet that? Because we need to be on that track. Uh, it's clear from the numbers in the report that Australians expect all, all politicians of all persuasions, and in particular the government, to deliver. How many people were surveyed? 
It was over 1,900 that were surveyed and the right, uh, right uh, uh, process was applied in terms of it was a full demographic uh, spread, it was a spread in terms of geographically representative of all states in Australia and you might ask, for example, many in Queensland also, uh, it may not be as high as in other states but it is still there, the concern about climate change and wanting to see action. Oh, look, oh, it's only as awkward as everyone wants to make it. But I think there's a responsibility. And I just, I think like many Australians, I really hope uh, that, our, that uh, our Prime Minister is going to find that motivation to be a leader. Uh, we've had great eulogies for Bob Hawke and we've had eulogies for Tim Fisher and people are remembered for what they achieve. What is your legacy going to be? And so I'm really calling for... Scott Morrison, to really think about your legacy to future generations. Uh, this, the coalition has been in power now for over six years. They have the power and the opportunity to, to ensure a positive legacy. And so I'm there supporting and there to help and, uh, and support in any way I can to make that happen. Well, I think it's a growing, it's a, it's a quite, quite Australian's voice is getting much louder. Uh, we can see with the climate strike coming up on the 20th of September, uh, I think there's a, there's a news poll survey even out today that identifies that concern about climate is the second highest concern. So quite Australians are worrying about this because what we need to understand, the cost of adaptation is so great and it is impacting every aspect of our lives. Uh, our, the cost of living is always at the forefront of people's concern and unfortunately global warming and a warming world impacts, the cost of adaptation will mean the cost of living goes up. The only way we can ensure that doesn't happen is if we take a long-term approach and we plan for what needs to be done. Ali, is it, is it um, the whole case of lobbyists and uh, Brooklyn governments over the environment over the future? I think it is, but this is an issue, uh, this should transcend that. This is not a short-term issue. We know it's a long-term, it requires long-term planning. All the scientists have told us that unless we take action now, it's going to be like falling off a cliff, the kind of action we have to take down the road. And even then, it would be too late to avert, avert the worst impacts. So I'm a big believer for plan. I come from a business environment. No business leader, no CEO of a company will expect a company to turn around or come up with a, a, a a, a good bottom line and a good outcome without a long-term plan. It just doesn't happen. You don't turn things around. And we need security and we need certainty. I mean, the PM's answer yesterday to my question was, well, I'm for jobs. We are all for jobs. There are many, many jobs in the uh, renewables industry and it is where innovation, future jobs are going to be. And we need to provide certainty for all the areas of industry that are worried about their jobs. So people in the coal mining and, and those in the current areas that are going to need to phase out. But it has been done before, it can be done again. We've lost the whole car manufacturing industry. Now you have to have a transition plan for that to happen. Uh, you know, talk to anyone that had a video store and they will tell you their industry disappeared. Um, it, it is unfortunately the way of our economies that we have to evolve. You have to meet the market, you have to evolve to new conditions. Um, and the only way you can evolve in a way that minimises impacts is by having a plan, and that's what we're calling for. With the decarbonised Australia nation, uh, but China and India won't. They're increased. They're, they're producing every year what the whole Australian economy is to the output of carbon. So how do you deal with it if you want so called globalisation of, of the world warming? How do you affect change when you've got China and India still producing and adding more power stations and carbon to the atmosphere?
but, but that's actually just not true. Uh, they are evolving as well and they are taking action. And it's not just a question of looking at energy. You have to look at a number of factors. China is extremely focused on its air pollution and its air quality standards, for example. And they are taking very real action when it comes to improving that. So they know that, for example, coal-fired power is really damaging to their air quality. But proportionally, they are moving towards renewables at a much faster rate. But and so... Absolutely, but do you tell your kids that you can just throw your rubbish on, rubbish on the street because you're just one person and your rubbish won't matter? Every little bit counts. It's such a false argument to say that Australia is a small player so it doesn't matter. We have an opportunity to lead. Uh, China and India are taking action. I have a trip to India coming up with the Environment and Energy Committee and that will be very interesting to see what steps they're taking. And yes, they have a mix, but they are moving in those directions because they are very focused on the health impacts and the air pollution aspects that come with coal-fired power. So to say that they are not doing anything about their carbon emissions is simply false. And to say that because they're not moving fast enough, we don't need to move is absolutely false as well. We all have to do our bit, but we have to look at all the sectors. It's not just about energy. We have to look at transport. We have to look at industry. We have to look at agriculture. And all these things need a plan. You can't just turn things around or change the way people are doing it. And that is what we're calling for, a plan to do it. I mean, we see, you know, the Amazon fire, uh, the lungs of the world that are on fire at the moment. We see drastic bushfires and, and just the environment uh, that's coming from that heating world, the, the conditions are leading to more severe impact. We need to do something about this. If this was an army at our sh uh, invading our shores, we would be taking action. And that's what it is. That's what a global warming means. You mentioned the September 20th protest, but the government has previously dismissed other protests on this matter. What would you say to them if they dismiss this as well, when it's obviously adults joining it? Well, we know that 81% from this report Climate of the Nation 2019, 81% of people surveyed want action. Now we know that children want action, we know that school kids want action. Uh, you can ignore protests, uh, I think, at your peril. Um, I think at the end of the day, our job is to represent our electorates. And if our electorates are overwhelmingly telling us we want to take action, we want a plan on how we're going to deal with this problem, then it's our responsibility to do that. I think we've seen, for example, uh, the, the climate leaders and the, the climate strike. What's interesting is the arena you now have for communicating. We have social media, we have, uh, we have forms of media that are constantly evolving and information sharing. Our kids, my teenagers are aware of issues that I was certainly never aware of as a teenager myself. So that access to information means that any action can be global. So again, you have a climate strike, but it can be global. And so that just has so much more power. Well, Carl, the, the, um, the planning side of things, do you have uh, any thoughts on who could be involved with that? Well, look, I strongly believe that we should have a Reserve Bank style organisation set up to set that plan and to manage it. Because again, like the economy, there are different factors that come to play. There are uh, influences and different things that need to be analysed away from a polit political spectrum lens. We need it to be away from political partisanship and just a more factual approach to how can we achieve the best outcome. And so I see the Reserve Bank as managing that when it comes to our economy. Um, um, and so I do see that that would be a way to manage all our different sectors progressively evolving. Thank you. I might just add just a couple of key stats. Four out of five Australians are concerned that they're feeling the impacts of climate change right now. There's been a major jump in those felt impacts, that experience that climate change is not something for the future, it is something that is happening and it's real, be it floods or droughts or bushfires or the extinction rate or water shortages. So there's been a real increase in that concern and that's leading to concern as to whether the government is moving quickly enough to address the cause, to reduce our emissions and also to address these impacts that are unavoidable. If we look at the electricity sector, which is the largest polluting sector, you have the federal government focusing on 
increasing the shelf life of these old, high-polluting coal-fired power stations. 70% of respondents want to see coal-fired power stations transitioned to clean energy. So there's an increasing tension between what the government is doing and what we could do in order to address climate change. With coal mining, more people across the political spectrum want to see no new coal mines than want to see more coal mines open. And that's because there's an evolving understanding that coal is a major pollutant for climate change and that Australia is a major contributor. Australia is the third largest polluter when it comes to carbon pollution that's exported through our fossil fuels. So there's an increasing tension there as well. The Australian Institute's releasing this report now because in two weeks the UN Secretary General will host a climate action summit on the 23rd of September. The majority of people that we've surveyed want the Australian government to increase its action, to step up, to do more to reach the Paris Agreement. The majority of respondents don't want Australia to wait for China and the US to do more. The leadership is wanting now. There's a real question as to whether the Prime Minister will attend the UN Climate Action Summit. And if he doesn't attend, then there'll be questions asked as to why it's not following through with the wishes of the majority of Australians.